This video was brought to you by Brilliant, and the first 200 people to sign up using the link down below will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. On Thursday afternoon, Italy's Five Star Movement refused to support a crunch vote regarding cost of living support measures, which ultimately led to the collapse of the Italian government. Yep, you heard that right, the collapse of the Italian government. In some sense, this has been a long time coming. The broad coalition government led by Mario Draghi was always beset by ideological tensions, and Five Star itself essentially split into two parties in late June, over a major disagreement in the party's Ukraine policy. Nonetheless though, the events of Thursday will bring renewed political chaos at a time of crisis, which isn't great news for ordinary Italians. So in this video, we're going to be looking at what's happened whether it will lead to a general election, and if so, who might win. So, before we get into yesterday's events, a bit of context. To understand this story, we're going to have to go back to 2018, when Italy last held a general election. An election which resulted in a hung parliament, with no single party able to obtain a majority in the 630-seat Chamber of Deputies, or the 315-seat Senate. That being said though, the Five Star Movement, an ideologically confusing party founded by comedian and blogger Beppe Grillo in 2009, did come out as the largest single party, with 227 seats in the Chamber of Deputies and 112 seats in the Senate. Now, in the election, Five Star presented themselves as the anti-establishment party, accusing both the establishment centre-right coalition, previously led by Silvio Berlusconi, and the centre-left coalition that took over in 2013 of being corrupt and incompetent. Policy-wise, Five Star was sort of economically left-wing Italian nationalists, and in 2018, Five Star definitely did have some left-wing policies, like universal basic income and various green initiatives, but also some right-wing ones, like strict limits on immigration and a vague Euroscepticism. Anyway, we're just mentioning this ideological equivocation because it helps to explain some of the subsequent events that we're about to go into. Now, originally, Five Star went into a coalition with the right-wing Lega Nord, otherwise known as the League. This coalition lasted for about a year before the League withdrew their support, and Five Star were forced to look to the other side of the political aisle, ultimately forming a new coalition government with the centre-left Democratic Party, led by former Prime Minister Matteo Renzi, and the left-wing Free and Equal Party a minor party that won just 3% of the popular vote. Again, this coalition lasted a little over a year, and in January 2021, Renzi, who by this point had left the Democratic Party to form his own party, Italia Viva, withdrew his support from the government over how to spend Italy's coronavirus recovery budget. Anyway, after this decision, Conti was still able to command a majority in the Chamber of Deputies, but he was unable to squeeze out a majority in the Senate, so he decided that he ought to resign. Now, at this point, it was difficult to see how anyone would be able to find a majority, given that Five Star had tried coalitions with both the left and the right. Usually, this would mean holding a general election, but the ongoing pandemic all but ruled that out. So, Italy's parliament turned to Mario Draghi, a well-known technocrat who was previously the governor of the Bank of Italy and the president of the European Central Bank. Now, this isn't the first time that Italian politics has had to resort to technocracy. Carlo Chiampi, another former governor of the Bank of Italy, was called upon in 1993, and in 2011, Mario Monti, a well-known economist and former European commissioner, came in to steady the ship after the resignation of Silvio Berlusconi. Anyway, Draghi was able to successfully negotiate a new government of national unity, involving all of Italy's major parties apart from the Brothers of Italy, a right-wing nationalist group who won 4% of the vote in 2018. Now, this government actually functioned remarkably well throughout the Covid pandemic, 
But as COVID subsided, so did the political imperative for stability. And ideological tensions between the coalition have since come to the fore. This was especially true for Five Star, whose anti-establishment populism occasionally clashes with Draghi's more technocratic politics. Five Star also have their own internal disagreements, which weren't all that relevant over the pandemic, but have since come to the fore. In fact, in June, the party split in two over a disagreement regarding Russia, with a significant minority in the party in favour of continuing military aid to Ukraine, and the rest of the party, well, disagreeing with them. And that's perhaps unsurprising, because Five Star have a long history of pro-Russian sympathies. In the lead-up to the 2018 election, various Five Star politicians rallied against NATO's, quote, aggressive expansion, and blamed the Ukraine crisis on Atlanticist meddling. In the last few months, Giuseppe Conte, the leader of Five Star, has sounded hesitant about sending military aid to Ukraine, warning about the possibility of an arms race, and advocating for a diplomatic solution instead. Now, this didn't go down too well with fellow Five Star member Luigi Di Maio, the current foreign minister, who felt that Conte's position was undermining him. And in the end, De Maio and about 60 other five-star lawmakers decided to split off and form their own party, together for the future. And it's also worth saying that Five Star have a long-standing rule prohibiting lawmakers from standing for more than two terms, and De Maio would have had to step down at the next election if he'd stayed anyway, which could have motivated his exit. Anyway, while De Maio's new group pledged to continue supporting Draghi's government, it became clear that the coalition was on its last legs. And this finally came to a head on Thursday, when Giuseppe Conte said that Five Star couldn't continue to support Draghi's proposed cost of living support package, because he said that it wasn't generous enough. And realising that he no longer commanded the support of Parliament, Draghi announced that he was resigning, paving the way for new elections. So, if these elections actually end up happening, then who might win? Well, according to Politico's poll of polls, currently the two most popular parties are the Brothers of Italy and the Democratic Party, who are both sitting on about 22% support. The Brothers of Italy, who won just 4% of the vote back in 2018, have, have benefited from being essentially the only opposition party within Italy, capitalising on the anti-establishment sentiment that previously went to League and Five Star, who have both suffered precipitous drops in support since joining the governing coalition. Five Star, who won 33% of the vote in 2018, are polling at just 11%, while League, who are polling at 40% back in 2019, are now at just 15 It seems then that both parties suffered from their participation in Draghi's government, which saw them adopt and endorse more moderate policies than they otherwise would have done, thereby dulling their anti-establishment allure. Unfortunately for ordinary Italians, though, if the polls are even broadly correct, then an election is unlikely to provide any kind of political stability. That's because any majority coalition would require an uncomfortable mishmash of ideologically disparate parties which, given that it would lack Mario Draghi's steady hand, could be even less stable than the current government. And this is especially bad news, given that Italy is currently struggling with a cost-of-living crisis, increased borrowing costs, and even a drought. Ultimately, then, we'll have to wait and see if an election actually happens, and if it does, which parties get the electorate's backing. But this is ultimately just a problem-solving exercise, something which is always at the heart of politics, whether it be making the electorate happy or trying to keep your government in one piece. So if you want to be able to do what politicians often can't, then consider signing up to Brilliant. That's the STEM learning platform which actually features a class on the joy of problem solving. In that class, like all of their others, they use active learning techniques to help you learn complex subjects, like logical reasoning, deducing facts from fiction, and logic puzzles, with you learning through fun and engaging activities. These interactive classes cover all kinds of STEM topics too, from computer science and cryptocurrency, to statistics and casino probability. 
So if you want to take your next step in STEM and support the channel at the same time, then you can sign up to Brilliant at brilliant.org forward slash TLDR EU. And the first 200 people to do so will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks for your support.